Today, the Supreme Court handed down another batch of rulings, and the question is, which civil rights and civil liberties did we lose today, folks? So the first is they decided to gut Miranda rights. So in the event a police officer arrests you and doesn't read you your Miranda rights and you end up self-incriminating, and then later on, that self-incriminating evidence is used against you in the court of law— well, you can't sue the police officer who failed to read you your Miranda rights. Now, the reason why Miranda rights are incredibly important is because most people, I'd argue, probably don't know about their Miranda rights. They don't know that they have the right to remain silent. So when you don't remind them of that, they could likely self-incriminate. So that's why this was an important civil liberty and important for police officers to do. The Supreme Court said, mm, don't really care. Now, on top of that, they also stripped away our right to remain safe and secure in this country by striking down a New York concealed carry regulation. Josh Gerstein of Politico reports the Supreme Court has ruled in favor of gun owners who want to carry their weapons outside the home, striking down New York State's rules, giving local officials broad authority to deny such permits for almost any reason. Writing for the majority, Justice Clarence Thomas said New York's requirement that gun owners show proper cause to carry a weapon outside the home for self-defense violates the Constitution's guarantee of gun rights. Quote, we know of no other constitutional right that an individual may exercise only after demonstrating to government officers some special need, Thomas wrote. That is not how the First Amendment works when it comes to unpopular speech or the free exercise of religion. It is not how the Sixth Amendment works when it comes to a defendant's right to confront the witnesses against him. And it is not how the Second Amendment works when it comes to public carry for self-defense. Yeah, so I I mean, anyone with a brain can acknowledge that it is abundantly clear how these far-right Supreme Court justices are detached from reality. They're actually comparing the right to purchase a deadly weapon designed to kill to somebody saying something unpopular. Well, you don't have to get a permit to say something unpopular, therefore, why should you get a permit or show proper cause to get a permit to uh, buy this weapon to kill people? And sure, most people will not purchase a gun with the intent to kill people. Perhaps they get it for self-defense. But I want to be abundantly clear here. New York did not ban concealed carry. All that they are asking, reasonably so, is that if you want a concealed carry permit, you simply show proper cause. Why you need this. So that way, if somebody says, well, I want a concealed carry permit because I plan on robbing someone, the state can say no. But the Supreme Court is saying, actually, they don't have to show proper cause at all. They could just get a concealed carry permit. That's unconstitutional. Now, they are limiting the scope of this ruling to New York's law, but other states who have similar laws will likely see uh, their law struck down in the coming years. As Zach Schoenfeld of The Hill explains, Thomas noted in his majority opinion that some other states have similar restrictions to the one declared unconstitutional on Thursday. Thomas explicitly referenced proper cost standards like the one in New York and laws enacted by California, Hawaii, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Washington, D.C. Yeah, so needless to say, those laws in those states are on borrowed time right now. So what this case does, what this ruling does, is it drastically expands gun anarchy and limits the state's ability to enact gun regulations that curtail the level of violence that we see in the United States. But the implications are broader than that. Slate's Mark Joseph Stern explains that this new test that the court is imposing on states, quote, will render many, many more gun control laws unconstitutional. And he adds, before today, about 83 million people about one in every four Americans lived in a state that strictly limited concealed carry to those who had a heightened need for self-defense. Now, zero people live in such a state. Now, we haven't even gotten to the most absurd element of this case. Because of the precedent that they're setting, well, the gun legislation that the Senate is working on right now, the bipartisan gun legislation, because of this precedent, that legislation could eventually be struck down. Literally. And I just want to for a second remind you about that gun legislation. It is not even the bare minimum. It will not do enough. But Republicans are presumably trying to go along with something just so people can get off their backs and they can use this as an excuse after the next mass shooting and say, well, we passed something. So this is not even sufficient it's not going to curtail gun violence, but there's some good elements in it. However, the far-right Supreme Court is establishing a precedent that would likely claim that this bipartisan gun law, which is milk toast, 
is unconstitutional. So they're going further than the far-right Republican senators currently. Schoenfield continues, Adam Winkler, a professor at the UCLA School of Law, raises doubts about the court upholding red flag laws, which allow courts to confiscate weapons from someone deemed a danger to themselves or others. A law like a red flag law, part of the Senate compromise, is a new modern innovation, he said. There is no historical tradition of taking guns away from people who are in crisis. He also raised alarm bells about the legislation's closing of the so-called Called boyfriend loophole. The legislation would expand existing regulations that prevent abusers in certain circumstances from obtaining a firearm to abusers in romantic and dating relationships. So because of this ruling today, well, the law that the Senate will likely vote on this week could and will likely eventually be struck down. That is how extreme this Supreme Court is to the right of Senate Republicans. Now, Biden denounced the decision in a statement, but one thing that he said following this news really rubbed me the wrong way, and I want to get to that. So CNN senior reporter Edward Isaac Dovier writes, Biden in a statement on the Supreme Court guns decision sent to reporters by email says, I call on Americans across the country to make their voices heard on gun safety. Lives are on the line. Now, I'm sorry, I've got to ask, what does that even mean? You are the president of the United States. You have power currently, and you are calling on a nation of Americans who are powerless in the face of corporate overreach and far-right extremists to do something when you're the one who's supposed to act? I mean, Biden just about seven days ago signed legislation expanding security for Supreme Court justices. So, I mean, if we want to protest in front of their homes, uh, which would actually get their attention, then I guess that's frowned upon now, hence the need for more security because they can't trust the peasants to be civil. So, I mean, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to protest? Do you want us... What exactly is the takeaway, Biden? You have the fucking power. You are the president of the United States. If you truly cared, then nominate a new Supreme Court justice to the court. There is no constitutional restriction on the number of justices. And since Republicans packed the Supreme Court already... You can argue that you're simply unpacking it. Balance the court. Nominate someone. He has a couple of months left, and I guarantee you, this isn't even a possibility that he's entertaining. Now, let's get to some responses here. Ellie Mistal says, People need to understand that one of the only things keeping conservatives in line 20 years ago was the concern of political revolt if their decisions were too extreme. Now, they don't fear that at all. They think the opposition is too weak. They're going to keep doing this. And he's absolutely correct. Jason Campbell writes, Apparently our right to shop, go to school, attend church, and live our lives in safety is less important than overgrown children pretending to be a John Wayne character. Kate Smith writes, Sorry to be controversial, but maybe everyone frantically refreshing a website to figure out what rights they still have isn't the democracy we think it is. Exactly. I mean, we are losing multiple civil rights and civil liberties every single week at this point. This is unsustainable. People are losing faith in the Supreme Court, in democracy. Our institutions are being delegitimized. And this much instability, this much extremism within our government is going to lead to the downfall of this regime. And for those of you who are excited about that, hoping something better will emerge, how close do you think we are to a socialist regime compared to a fascist authoritarian dictatorship. We're closer to that, I'd argue, than socialism. So it, things are just going to continue to deteriorate and we will have feckless leaders who are supposed to be the opposition just sitting by and saying, man, I wish somebody could do something after they just got elected two years ago. It's just, it's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to really process this information. You know, it kind of just rolls off my shoulders because... We're all accustomed at this point to losing rights on a weekly basis, but really don't let them dupe you into believing that this is an expansion of rights because an expansion of gun rights, that might be technically what's happening here, but this is curtailing the rights of American citizens who want to be safe and secure in their fucking countries. But because gun anarchy is what the extremists want, well, that's what they're giving us. They're ruling with an iron fist and they're saying, if you don't like it, shut the fuck up and take it. It's just, I don't know how bad it's going to get in this country. It's truly horrifying to think about a year or two, how much more civil rights and civil liberties could be taken away from us. Next week, they will likely strike down Roe v. Wade. And they're waiting to the very end because they know how unpopular that'll be. So, 
yeah, really horrifying situation, but this is the United States of America. We are an empire that is dying before our very eyes. And at this point, who knows what rights will be left after this far-right Supreme Court is done with us.